Hi there, it's Simon Stockhausen with part 3 of a tutorial about granular synthesis. Part 3 now focusing on the aspect grain pitch again. We already had this in part 1, but let's get a bit more into this topic, especially also focusing on the aspect of um, pitch quantization, like um, what we can do with grain pitches. Here we have Halion 5 playing a sound from my library Sonic Cinema. It's a euphonium duet, so to speak. First we have a sample playing octaves and fifths. It's our solo it. And we have another sample layered. It's just a tremolo on uh, D3. This one here. So, um, already set up is one thing that we can uh, introduce a pitch offset between the left and right channel of a stereo sample, um, up to one octave. Let's see how that sounds. You see I'm moving the macro here, this is assigned to this parameter. And it goes in the other direction too. Then there is um, the function of randomization of the pitch, grain pitch. Um, this can either be modulated here by assigning something to this parameter, or I'll show you another way in a minute. So now within a half and a semitone, the pitches are randomized. This goes up to one octave. Let's reduce grain duration for now. So this can be used for subtle detune effects or for chaotic randomized pitch clouds. Another way is to um, assign an LFO to grain pitch or um, I often use the noise generator which is also sort of a, a randomizer and um, modulate the grain pitch via the mod wheel. So the mod wheel determines the amount so the maximum amount we can set it, set it let's say to 60 uh, and let's also make this maybe exponential and now and no not bipolar this is bipolar but the mod wheel should not be bipolar so now noise is assigned to grain pitch <laughs> Now, with the wheel fully engaged, we have plus minus five octaves. Oh, 
or we can use other modulators. In this case here, I'm set, I've set up a step sequencer, um, playing octaves, fifths, octave below, here's a fourth, two. Um, this is not tempo synced, so we can determine it using this parameter, the speed. So let's substitute the noise generator with a step sequencer, step modulator, also via the mod wheel, and now we have to scale it to plus or minus an octave as the sequence itself has a range of plus minus 12 semitones and it's bipolar. So now this pitch sequence will be applied to grain pitch. No modulation now. And now the wheel coming in. So Now we speed up the sequence. Longer grain sizes, so larger chunks of grains are played back. We can of course combine it with a grain pitch offset. Turn the wheel down again. So you see, you can create very harmonic and tonal grain clouds using these techniques, or totally chaotic and experimental grain clouds concerning the pitch. Um, yeah, let's uh, switch to another application named the Mangle, which has like um, pre-programmed scales which can be applied to pitch. Uh, here I'm using a harp sample I, I made for one of my libraries. It's uh, playing a sequence of notes and flageolet notes on my Celtic harp. Um, so first, without pitch modulation, it sounds like this. I'm playing already several notes here. Now let's play an octave on a G and see, we've, I've now quantized this to a pentatonic scale. Now I move this knob, so it goes through the pentatonic scale up to five octaves, up to sixteen octaves. Without a pitch lock, this would sound like microtunal stuff. Um, let's try a different scale, maybe a Dorian scale. This pitch uh, um, no knob here can, of course, be modulated either by an LFO or a mod wheel or whatever. So you, you get the idea of creating tonal grain clouds. Let's switch to another app, Crusher X, which we already know from the part one of this tutorial. I'm here playing some glass sounds from also the Halion 
Bank Sonic Cinema. This is unprocessed, just a sequence of accents played on four crystal glasses. Now let's um, granulate it. Oh, it's already got a pitch modulation applied. Here the speed parameter in Crusher X also uh, determines the pitch. Set it to zero. So these are just granulated glasses with a rather long 700 milliseconds length of the grains. Let's reduce it. And the modulation of the length. Turn it up again. So we get more of very large chunks of audio which we can now pitch modulate. The birth is set to set it even lower. Let's use yeah we have five now. Offset the gen the grain stream so we get a more continuous sound with the stereo offset between the sides as you hear. Now the speed, let's modulate it first with a normal sine wave at a slow speed. Or we can use a square wave, a rectangle wave, set it to one octave. Let's reduce the length a bit. Turn the main pitch down. Zero would be free. Or what we can do in Crusher X, draw our own waveform for pitch modulation or for any other modulation, which is a very interesting feature named spline. I've set up this rather chaotic curve I uh, already in the past took hours of uh, editing these uh, splines to actually sort of compose melodies for pitch modulation of the grains and then using um, Crusher X also for live processing of uh, orchestral material in some of my or live orchestral works I'm using this plug so that uh, you can compose like grain melodies which are generated in real time out of the music that the orchestra plays, which is a very interesting aspect for me uh, of granular synthesis, to use it live and um, to, to uh, twist around the, the sound of acoustic instruments um, with applications like this. So let's see how this uh, rather chaotic spline curve, let's turn it first down, speed back up. So this is the original pitches. Let's turn the offset back down. Increase the number of generators maybe. And now start modulating the pitch first at a slow speed. So we see the spline curve again. Let's turn up the speed a bit. So 
So it's looping this curve. Or I can use also, of course, random waves, whatever, or assign it to this XY pad, or set up a mod wheel or any other controller to manipulate the pitch in real time. This is now randomized. Let's turn the speed down. Modulate the length. Reverse. No modulation. So you get an idea of what's um, possible and what um, grain manipulating the grain pitch does to your audio. I think this should be enough for part three. I'll be back with part four soon. Bye. Thanks.